Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning, ladies. Good morning, audience and viewers. We are watching. You are going to watch uh, both TV. Beautiful, outstanding ladies with disabilities. Where we talk about issues on disabilities and issues related to disabilities. The program is being powered by Bold Art Initiative. It comes to us every Saturday by 10:30 a.m. And today we have a very good, interesting topic which we would like us to discuss. It's like a reminder or to know more about it. It's recognizing your value as a lady with disabilities. And I have a team of women here that are living with different disabilities. And they will tell us their value and how you can know your value at the same time too. So the program will start the moment I tell the ladies to introduce themselves. But before then, I have to start with the introduction. Your host for today. And I'm Osaki Teresa Georgie. I reside in Port Harcourt, River State. I'm a polio survivor. I work with Fair Care Foundation, a member of Bohat Initiative, and I use crutches, polio warrior. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be here once again and welcome. My name is Afia Onetum. I'm a medical lab scientist. I'm based in Uyo. I uh, use a wheelchair from spinal cord injury, and I'm a member of the Bold Hearts Initiative. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Abiel Seth Faladi. I'm the Executive Director of Angel Wings Global Freedom Foundation. I'm an author, a helper, and a friend. I also am an entrepreneur. Um, I live in Ibadan. I use a wheelchair, and I'm a member of Bold Heart Initiative. So by way of introduction, thank you very much. My name is Frankie Andresen. I'm based in Port Harcourt, founder of Faker Foundation, member of Bold Heart Network, public health professional, among other things. And I use a wheelchair from spinal cord injury. Thank you. Okay, good morning. My name is Grace Oluwatosi Awolumate. I'm based in Ibadan, Oyo State. I'm a gospel music minister. I work on four arm crutches. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> My name is Oluwato Misi Adeyefa, a broadcast journalist, a sound engineer, a gender and disability rights advocate, and a sexuality and reproductive health campaigner. Feels good to be here once again. Thank you. Oh, I'm a visually impaired person, and I'm based in Abel Kuta, the state capital of the state. Thank you very much. So we're going to go back to our topic, which I say is recognizing your value as a woman with disability. You know, this value is something, is something that is very serious, which you have to know. If you don't know it, you won't be able to recognize it, and you'll be able to use it the way you ought to use it. I'll say value is something that is an attribute that you can that you, you can become or you want to be something that is something that you're used to, something that you enjoy doing, like a, your lifestyle. So say you value this thing. Like if I say, for example, now I value um I I, 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 value, I love being kind. It's an action based, something that you want to do. You, you do as ah, but it's a kind person. People know you for that value of what you are. Your value becomes who you are. So people can identify you with your value. So uh, in the house, I'd like us to throw more light concerning value and example of value. Afion, please help me with that. Just put more interest of what I just said when it comes to value in your own terms and give me an example. Okay, value. When we talk about value, that has to do with, um, it's, you know, another word for it is what, what you think you're worth, what um, uh, the worth that other people um, ascribe to you you know, what your, the potentials you carry or you have, and, um, you know, it can com it comprises of your talents, your skills, your capacity, and um, basically at the most basic level, it is your worth as an individual, as a human being, and every human being has value, but how valuable we are is, now dependent on you know the skills and the talents and capacity that we have or we have developed over time. So to me, that is value. What you know the potentials you have within you that you know can be used to impact positively on others. 
And an example of that value for me would be, you know, um, maybe in the case of um, your ability to contribute, maybe in employment, what you bring to the table when it comes to, you know, working with others, working in a team, what you're able to contribute that is, you know, helps to move an organization or a group towards their goal. So that's, for me, that's an example of value. Thank you. All right, thank you very much for the question. So when we speak about value, just like Afyong said, it is ascribing worth to something. In this case, we're talking about ascribed worth that a person gives to themselves or qualities that they have. That is the importance of, um, that's what I understand values to mean. So in the case of the worth of women with disabilities, it would be what, or the value of a woman with disability, what value do you ascribe to yourself or what you have or what you perceive that you give or you have to offer to whether it's society or to a role or to family or to anything that you are giving yourself to or, or to your life generally. And um, just to add perspective to it, it has to do with your perception of the worth that you have of yourself as a person. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. That's a brilliant contribution of value of what the worth of what value you can give to yourself. And I, I like the part you came in of as a woman with disability, what is that worth that you add to yourself? So that would take into the by the next question that is of two in one that I'm going to talk about the value you have for something and the value you have for yourself. Like the thin line, people mix up value for something and value of their own description or identity. For example, now, I enjoy when someone sing. I can't as, I should put um, singing as my own value because I don't sing. But someone should sing, I enjoy that. I have value for those that sing. But what I enjoy doing, like normal, it's I like being, um, I smile a lot. And on the humble side of humility, I try to see how I can exercise that more. So I can say in my own person, my own value of, is, of life is part of say, humility or smiling or trying to see how you can be helpful to somebody. But I, I can't put um, singing to myself because I hardly even sing. So it's not part of my own value. So I like us. Um, please tell us more when it comes to your own value and the things you value. So, give an example. One of the, what you value and the things you value. There's a thin line. I believe that when it comes to ascribing value to things, is is usually it's easier for people to you know easily identify um, the worth. You know how worth, um, worthy or how valued things or other people are. But when it comes to you, it usually means. It's usually hard to be objective, to actually ascribe true value to yourself, to say, this is who I am. This is what I'm capable of. This is what, you know, I am an asset. See yourself as an asset and not a liability. Because it's easy to see everything you cannot do and the things that are wrong and the things you know you're not capable of. And then, you know, so it takes some objectivity and it also takes being able to look beyond your flaws to see that being a human being on its own makes you valuable. You don't have to have, you know, so many skills or talents. You don't have to be like anybody else to be valuable. Just being you is value enough. All you have to do is now build on what is already there. So taking the time to look at yourself, you know, objectively and seeing what is already in you you know, not in comparison to other people. So when it comes to, you know, acknowledging the value in others, it's easy, but the, it's easy to do that. But you must also be able to understand that your value is not in comparison with others. You are not valuable compared to somebody else. You are valuable just as you are. That's how I see it. Thank you very much, Arjun, for that answer. That is just what I wanted on the value of what you attach to another thing, another person, and to one you, you actually can give up. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. So the next question is on 
um, Freki. The question is, in what ways can a woman with disability devalue herself? How can I devalue myself? So please just throw more light on that. All right, thank you very much. Um, just to toe the line that, you know, Afion presented when she was speaking to um, ascribing value easily to other things and not oneself. That is one of the ways that women with disabilities devalue themselves by always doing comparison to others. So there is always a tendency to want to compare yourself to different sets of people. For example, comparing yourself and value and placing your value based on um, the standard of completeness as it were, when it comes to, for example, the physical body or um, the impairments that one has. So just to break that down, what I'm trying to say is that when you tie the value that you place or the premium that you place on yourself in, in line with comparing what you have by way of the reason for being called a person or a woman with disability to what um, the world sees as the standard, um, one tends to devalue herself based on that or demerit herself based on the obvious impairments. And another thing that happens with women with disabilities as regards um, um, the issue of devaluing oneself is um, listening to the many voices that one hears where there's emphasis on the things you cannot do as opposed to emphasis on things that you can do as opposed to your strengths being celebrated over your weaknesses. So this one, not even about impairments, it's about things that are ascribed to, for example, our gender as women. And then the thoughts that society has that, oh, because you are a woman with an obvious impairment or a disability, you are less of a woman. So words like that, you know, make women with disabilities devalue or um, demerit themselves. So I'll leave, um, these are two, there are more, but I would like the conversation to go around. Thank you very much. Another way that women with disability can devalue themselves is when they listen to people when they start talking about your disability in a negative manner. And then that makes you shrink into yourself and makes you feel that you don't have anything to offer. This can be in a case of where people say your legs are too thin. I'm giving examples of what people would say that you may make you devalue yourself as a woman with disability when you use your disability as a weapon against you. So when they say things like your legs are too thin, your body is disproportionate to each other, like your head is bigger than your body or your, your upper body is heavier than your lower body. That's a way of them saying that you feeling as if you do not worth anything because you cannot be as they would like you to be. So um, women with disability listen to that thing a lot and then they shrink into themselves and they don't talk. Thank you. Still on how one can devalue uh, a woman with disability. I'll let you throw more light on it when society wants to devalue someone with, with disability. Okay, we talked about um, how a woman with disability can devalue herself. Um, and to add to that, I think one of the main things is comparison. You know, when a woman compares herself, a woman with disability compares herself to, to others, especially to those who are able-bodied and, you know, non-disabled and, you know, tries to use their standard, you know, uh, compares herself and um, uh, estimates her value based on that standard, which is not appropriate. Then when it comes to society, persons with disability, women and girls with disability are devalued when they are not seen as human or as subhuman. You know, when you are treated as um, less than human, when uh, they are deprived of opportunities that they are qualified for because of their physical condition. And um, in cases where they are not granted access, whether due to structural barriers or, you know, information barriers, these are some of the ways that society devalues persons with disabilities. And for women and girls with disabilities, especially, gender plays a role when you are seen as, oh, she's a woman and she has a disability. So what can she do? When your, your value is attached to what you look like or how you 
you know, do things because you're differently able. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was an excellent uh, contribution. So I know people out there are listening and we have women living with disabilities that have this um, criteria, uh, setting criteria of what we just said. So I'm sure they're going to listen and they will learn from it. So still on our recognizing your value as a woman with disability, I'm going to the importance of value, how to, important why you should value, why you should know, you should recognize this um, values you have with you. I would like Grace to please tell us something when it comes to the importance of knowing that you have value, recognizing your values. Okay, so it is very important in the sense that it determines how you are addressed. It determines how you are addressed, how you are treated, how people relate with you, and the kind of picture you give to people outside there. Um, so um, for me, I think it is very important that you, you, you make people see your value, tell people about it, talk about it, so that you are not addressed lesser, so that you are not put in a place where, in, in a lower place. So I think it is very important as it, it determines how you are addressed and treated. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I like that part you said it, um, it determines how you're going to be addressed. Like telling us your value. People ask you, what can you do? The moment they see you, they just feel you can't do anything. And even you might even judge yourself wrongly. So you, you now have to say, I can do this. Or you've already practiced something else which nobody could imagine you can do. For example, if you say, um, I make the meal or whatever, I cook at home. No, no people say, this, who say think, can she really cook? And you say, I know this food I know that I made it. You know, that, that, that's a value. And of course, people like, eh, she you can cook. That's a credit. That's something you do and you enjoy it. And you know you can do it. Because you said it now, so ah, she can cook. Someone wants to add an attribute to you. Please add to that the importance of recognizing your value as a woman with disability. While she's trying to get herself ready, um, Freki, are you still there? If you are there, please help us with the importance. Okay, so um, why is it important for women with disabilities to know their value? Because it will build your self-esteem. It's easy for people to want to judge a book by its cover. But value is goes beyond the cover, goes beyond the container, and speaks a lot to the content. But most importantly, speaks to how you present yourself, how you know what your value is. So why it is important for a woman with disability is because against all odds, knowing your value helps you to shine, helps you to not define yourself just by disability or an obvious impairment. So this is for me is um, of great import. Thank you very much, an excellent answer. Um, I think it's, I, did, I do believe it is important for women with disabilities to, you know, understand their values. Like Grace said, it determines how you are dressed. But first of all, I believe before you know, it influences how people uh, um, treat you. It starts with you accepting yourself, acknowledging that your difference is not, neg is not a negative um, concept. Being different does not mean um, being um, less valuable. So accepting yourself first, when you accept yourself, then it will influence the way you project, the image you project, how you carry yourself, how you express yourself, how you interact with others, which will then, it's like a cascade, you know, a ripple effect. It starts from within. It starts with what you do on, in the inner man, and then it will reflect on the outside because what you think of yourself, even the Bible says, um, I, for those of us who are not spiritual, but I just had to bring this, is even the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So that means what's going on inside you, your inner dialogue affects the way you express yourself outside. So that will now influence 
how people respond to you because people will respond to what you put out there. So knowing your value means when you go out there, the way you present yourself will be different from how everybody else does. It, it's your unique signature. People know that, oh, she's confident, she's bold, she knows what she wants, you know? And, you know, at, when it gets to a point where people no longer see what is different about you. They just see you because you have created a brand. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. So our next question is goes to Thomas, see if she's there. Thomas, the question is, what does it mean to know your value? How, I think, what, what does it mean to know your value? What does it, how, how does it feel like? What it really means to know your value? Um, knowing, knowing your value makes you feel at ease with yourself. Knowing that you are not useless, knowing that you are not a redundant person, knowing that um, you have something to contribute makes you feel confident confident, it makes you feel at ease, it boosts your self-esteem, it also boosts your thinking capacity, you're able to think beyond where you are right now, because I mean, you, are, you want to strive to be better. So when you know your value, you want to do better, you want to improve, you want to um, impact, because you know that you have something that maybe the other person or the next generation needs so for me that's the kind of uh, meaning or feeling you get when you know your value okay thank you very much i like that part to say it has this way of gives this good feeling and part of our, if I, i'm going to add it says the, um what does it mean to know your value it's it, it allows to interact you interact freely with people give that um coolness to interact you want to talk because you know what you're saying and also it makes you more friendly. It gives you an equal opportunity when, when it comes to this public space. You want to put out your own voice without even being scared or looking at your person or your impairment. You're just all going and you know, that you have something to contribute. How do you recognize your value as a woman with disability? What ways can you recognize this value you're talking about? How do you recognize this value? Okay, yeah, so for me, it's by, by living it, by living it, living by your values. You don't just say I, you have values and you are not acting it, you are not living it. So leave it, leave your values, let people see who you are, let them know you for who you are. So that's my own opinion about it. Um, I believe one of the ways to recognize your value is to actually, you know, have a conversation with yourself. Ask yourself, you know, what are the things that, you know, I do? What are the things that, um, what are the ways that I contribute positively? And, um, you know, just like I said, just being a human being, that is the beginning of value. Every human being has value, but how much value you have depends on you know, how you build capacity and how you, you know, develop yourself. So start with acknowledging your strengths, you know, find out what are the things I'm good at, what are the things that I know how to do, you know, that is finding out, you know, trying to, you know, maximize or in, um, build on the value you have. But first and foremost, know that you are valuable as a person. You don't have to have skills or, you know, um, um, talents or, you know, acquire so many achievements to be valuable. You are valuable as a human being. But then you can also find out what are those things that, you know, empower me to be able to contribute positively. Because having value is one thing, being able to add value is another. So also, as you find out, as you tell yourself, I am valuable, I have worth, you know, I am not here just to occupy space. I am able to contribute positively. As you tell yourself that, you will also be able to recognize what are the things I'm good at, find your strengths and know the ways in which you can add value, find the things that you are, you know, 
you are good at, the things that make you, you know, po contribute positively. You can also ask people who you trust about how you add value to them. And that will also help to boost your sense of self-worth. Okay, thank you very much. That's an excellent answer. So I like the way you talk about you ask people, like what, 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 what's my value? What do you enjoy about me? Why are you in me? You know, those kind of questions help you to know yourself better. And like what I'm going to add is that be clear about your values. Do you know the things you can do like experts? If you are sleeping, they just wake you. You don't think much about it. You will just flow. Unlike the ones you have to, on the study or take time to get an expert, something that you can do very well. You just know that I, when it comes to singing, for those that sing like Freki or Freki, once you just call her anytime to sing, she just sings. And you're like, wow, what's it? She, she gives you the way you want. So those kind of um, attributes are kind of what I like, value, the way you have, how you can recognize it. You know the things you enjoy doing and you do the best at your pace. Uh, Thomas, say your dear, please help us with. How do you recognize it? If I just throw a lot more light on it. Okay. Um, Self-discovery, um, having, just like a young said, having a conversation with yourself, asking yourself some salient questions. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? What are the opportunities around you? And, you know, being able to also deal with uh, threats as well. So, Ask yourself those questions. What are your hobbies? What are your talents? What are your gifts? How do you improve on your gift, on your talent? How do you make it work for you? Because I mean, you can have a gift. You can know how to sing and, you know, singing is not making money for you. It's not even adding value to your life as it were. You know, some of us, we sing in the bathroom. <laughs> so for instance, if you want to uh, since we are using singing as an example, you have a very good voice. Uh, how do you make that good voice work for you? How do you make sure that the good voice, you know, is a thing that people would appreciate? Because, I mean, people would want to, I mean, get value for what they are listening to. How do you improve? Are you going to do courses? Are you going to enroll in a music class? Are you going to have a mentor? Are you going to, you know, participate in competitions, you know, join singing groups, you know, there. So explore opportunities that would make that gift, that talent that you got, you know, also be meaningful at the end of the day, because it is not enough if you have something within you and you are not exploring avenues to either brush it, bring it out or make it better. Okay, thank you very much. You went deep, and that takes us to our last question for today. Because we've talked a lot, we've said some meaningful points. Someone with a disability will use to help us when it comes to value. It's thought of how you can improve on your value. So that's the question I'm going to talk about. All of us will say one one thing concerning it: that how do I increase, improve uh, my value system as a lady with disability? Yeah. Okay, so um, how do you improve on your value system? Be open-minded as a woman with disability. Um, yeah, criticism are bound to come, threats. Um, uh, you are bound to lose some, win some. So be open-minded. You are bound to fall. You are bound to be confronted with a lot of challenges. So be open-minded to those challenges, you know, Talk to people who can help you overcome those challenges. Do not be afraid to, to confront those challenges in the face. Look them in the face and tell them you are an overcomer. So being able to know that, okay, when challenges come, you don't have to run in back into your shell. You just have to be bold enough and confront those challenges it will make you a better person at the end of the day. Because I mean, um, you'll be able to see things from a broader perspective, you'll be able to bring in good ideas, you'll be able to listen to people and digest and you know improve on whatever it is um, your existing value is given out to people. All right, thank you very much, Domisi. 
Grace, do that same question. Tell us what you can do to increase your value. Okay, so for me, like Tommy mentioned, um, it's by living above your, your challenges, like taking your eyes off the weaknesses and um, focusing on your strengths, focusing on those things you can do and getting better each day. So that's my own opinion. Thank you very much. Okay. Afshan, please add to that one more, how you can increase your value. Um, well, I think I've said it before, increasing your value means um, basically through self-development. And when we say self-development, that just simply means, you know, trying out new things, you know, not seeing anything as off limits in terms of learning and acquiring skills. Don't say, oh, this one is not for me, it's for somebody else. Find out, is there a way I can be part of this? If it's something you would want to do, if it's something that you know would you know, add value to you, because you can't give what you don't have. If you don't add value to yourself, you don't have anything to offer you know, to other people or to any you know, group organization you find yourself and these days value is the currency if you don't have any value to offer nobody's going to hire you so i think when it comes to learning trying to improve yourself not in comparison finding oh am i doing as good as this person no comparison you know is a thief of creativity it stops you from becoming the best you can be because you're you will never catch up you will always see yourself as less so to increase your value, compare yourself with yourself. Always look, you know, see how you can be a better version every day. In your thinking, doesn't mean you must learn a skill every day, but in your thinking, am I a different person from who I was yesterday? Do I still see things the same way? How do I respond to challenges? How do I do things? Even the normal everyday things you do, am I doing this the same way? Have I found a better way of doing it? Am I more efficient? Am I more effective? These are some of the little things you can do to improve yourself. Can I do this better? It doesn't have to be anything major. You don't have to get a degree or a diploma just to prove that, oh, I have improved, I have added value. Adding value can simply mean changing the way you think, trying seeing things differently based on the knowledge you acquire, you know, listening to the right things, reading the right books you know, talking to the right people, changing your circle of influence. You can't add value to yourself if you're still hanging around the same people you've always been with. At some point, you will have to outgrow certain people. Find out, are these people adding to me or draining me or not? Are they helping me become a better version of me? So changing your circle of influence, your, you know, network can actually, you know, they say your network, you know, is, uh, is, a reflection of your net worth. Who are those in your closest circle? Who are the people you talk to? Who are the people you share ideas with? Are they, are they the kind of people that can help you improve? Are they the ones that will tell you, oh, I think you can do this better. This is how you can go about it. So look at your network, find those closest to you and you know, see how you can leverage of the skills and the knowledge that other people have. You don't have to know everything by yourself. Nobody does. See how you can get, learn from others. You don't have to wait until, oh, it is until I learn it myself, then I know it is my own. You can get from someone else and it saves you the stress and sometimes the cost of going to learn it yourself. So get, get information from others. If I needed to, you know, say, okay, I want to know about public speaking, how to talk, you know, in public, how to express myself in public or address certain, you know, audiences. I don't have to go and start paying money. I can just go to Tommy Sin and tell her sister today, it's me and you. We'll just stay up. How many, how, what time can you spare? Because she's already well-versed in public speaking. She addresses audiences for a living. So I can go to her, get some tips on how I can improve you know, myself and how I can become better at expressing myself. So these are some of the things you can do. Start with the people you interact with. Check. Who am I hanging out with? This can help you to get better. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. You said robust 
things at the same time. I think one thing I'll just add up is um, volunteering. When you key into an action that you know to where that um, you might not be paid, but that volunteering will bring payment for you. So that can also add a value when you just decide to do something for somebody, like she said now, uh, after I'm going to meet Tom and Steve, let me just went, okay, let me just see how I can assist when it's public speaking. And where she does this well, someone will not ask Afion, Afion, how many, are you going to say, ah, it's from my friend Tommy C. The next person that is coming is a business. It's not, it's not like it's not free again the way she did for Afion. So volunteering could also help us build our own value. And from there, you get more skills and more things to help yourself as you move on. I know we've talked a lot today and we're about to round up for today's discussion, which is recognizing your value as a lady with disability. And this program comes to you every Saturday by 10.30 a.m. You can also look at our YouTube channel and we on our Facebook as usual. Our YouTube channel is YouTube, www.youtube.com slash both TV and our Facebook is www.facebook.com slash both heart network. So please, when you get a video, you share it as much as you can. And we thank um, for those that are subscribing for us, that uh, all their online audience have been watching. I'm just right now, we cannot pick out your names, but we say thank you for being there every time to watch us. Uh, able to listen to us and to share our videos and our thoughts. So I'd like the ladies in the house to say their bye byes and where we are, we are rounding up and we're done for today. So listen, just please unmute your mic and just say hi. Bye bye. Okay, bye. 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 See you next week. All right.